So the paper is Advanced Taxation UK Variant for, we are going to discuss for March 2023 exam. My name is Shana Ahmed. I'm your tutor of Advanced Taxation exam. I'm teaching this subject uh, and overall the ACCA subject for the past 17 years. I am from Pakistan and belongs to the city Karachi. So we are offering uh, the live classes as well as the recorded lectures. Whatever mode uh, suits you, you can contact us further on uh, this WhatsApp number so that we can guide you further about what feature we are offering to our advanced taxation students. Now let's begin. So first of all, let's talk about that uh, What is the syllabus of advanced taxation in March 2023 exam first? So I'm going to discuss the syllabus, then the examination pattern, and then the uh, real uh, exam, which is available, the uh, sample exam, which is available on ACC portal to show you that how the CV exam look like. And then we'll discuss the examiner report and do and do nots about uh, that what you have to follow, what you don't have to follow. Remember that this exam, ATX, is basically an advanced version of the TX exam, which was previously F6 and it was previously P6. So there are few students who are coming from the TX background, having knowledge of taxation exam, those who are coming from the exemption route and they have no knowledge about the TX exam. So this complete TX syllabus is included in advanced taxation exam. So what we are going to do, we will discuss the entire syllabus included in ATX of TX exam as well. So we'll discuss this ATX exam from the scratch, keeping in mind then a student have no idea about the previous paper. I'll assume that uh, all the students are coming from the examination exemption background. So first of all, what is what we are going to study in this syllabus? Our first area is income tax. That how an individual has to pay tax in his or her capacity. So as far as income tax is concerned, it is applicable on a salaried person. That is someone who is an employee somewhere. You need to find out how employment tax is to be calculated. What are the rules related to employment income? What are the rates? What type of tax rates we have to apply? How much exemptions are available? Which benefit is taxable and which benefit is going to be exempted? Next, in income tax, we have to discuss self-employment. For example, someone is not part of this employment job and the person is running his or her own business. then we have to identify that whether that person is a sole trader, working as a sole trader, or the part the person is a partner in a partnership business. Along with, we have to study the income from property, that is rental business, as well as other source of income, which is mainly your interest and dividend. So as far as the source of income is concerned, mainly in income tax, we have to identify the interest income, dividend income, and employment income, self-employment income, that is profit, 
and rental from the property business. We, have, we need to understand the rules regarding all these kind of income in the first portion. The second portion is about corporation tax. In this section, you have to understand that how companies, whether it's a small company or a large company operating in UK as a UK resident company or a non-UK resident company, how the tax is applicable on those companies. So as far as the UK tax law is concerned, even the company is large or small, the tax rate going to be 19%. There is no classification or reduction for small and medium enterprises. So what we need to identify, we need, we need to discuss all the affairs of corporation tax, such as the residence issues of the company, as well as the research and development expenditure treatment related with the company, any kind of relief available for the company, as well as the double taxation rule if a company is incorporated somewhere else, also paying tax in two countries. So how double tax rules will be implemented. And if a company is working as a branch or a subsidiary, how to deal with a subsidiary or a branch. Similarly, we have to discuss about the group aspects of the corporation that if you have subsidiaries, then how that subsidiaries will help you to mitigate your tax liabilities, how you can transfer items from one company to another, what will be the consequences? And similarly, uh, the close companies, personal family companies, kind of rules we have to discuss in this topic. These two are the most important areas and you might have one complete question on income tax as well as one complete question on corporation tax. The third area is the inheritance tax, IHT. IHT is also an examinable topic. Usually you might have one question, part of question, in different questions, you might get some part questions of IHT. IHT is basically applicable on lifetime gifts. So if someone is making lifetime gifts out of, out of his or her wealth, then there are IHT consequences, as well as on the death of an individual, if someone have the belongings, the assets available, then on their will, as per their will, they usually distribute as per the will to spouse, to brother, sister, husband, transfer to wife, wife transfer to husband. So what are the consequences of IHT on that state? Similarly, the fourth one is chargeable gain tax or capital gain tax, which is CGT. And this is applicable on disposal of chargeable assets, which is usually non-current assets. So if someone is selling building, plant and machinery and other kind of things, then usually you have to pay CGT in UK. And here we might have to discuss about uh, how to apply the rate of CGT the exemptions available, the reliefs available, how to deal with shares, stamp duties, et cetera, et cetera. This chargeable gain tax is applicable on individual as well as corporations. So if companies selling chargeable asset, Company has to pay tax. If an individual is selling chargeable asset, then individual has to pay CGT on that. 
the rules vary from individual to corporation. There are few differences in individual CGT as well as the corporation CGT. So usually the examiner asks one complete question mix of IHT and CGT. There might be a mix of question on IHT and CGT. So you might have one question on income tax, you might have one question on corporation tax and a mix of IHT and chargeable gain tax. The fifth one is a small topic that is value added tax, which is VAT. If someone is working in UK or living in UK, he or she might easily understand that how VAT works, where VAT is applicable. So basically it's a type of an indirect tax which is usually applicable on consumption of goods and services. When you consume goods and services, you have to pay tax and that is indirect tax. Currently, the VAT rate is 20% in UK on certain items, but there are few categories on which rate might be varied. There might be some exemption. So we classify goods and services as one classification is standard rated goods. Other classification is zero rated goods. And third classification is exempt goods. So as per the categories of the item, we have to apply VAT, that is indirect tax. In order to charge VAT on goods and services, the registration is compulsory. So you have to understand that when a company is going to be registered for VAT purpose and when a company is going to charge VAT from the customers. As far as the customers are concerned, it might be a case when your customer is a business, which is B2B, or it might be a case where your customer is an individual, which is B2C. Sometimes you are selling to a business and sometimes you are selling to a final consumer. But remember that it is the final consumer. This is the responsibility of a final consumer to pay VAT. If a business is VAT registered and also paying VAT, that business will be eligible to get it back from the tax authority. So we'll discuss few rules regarding value added tax, like what is the rule of uh, import? What is the VAT rule on import? What is the VAT rule on export? Is export is subject to VAT or import is subject to VAT? What kind of exemptions, what kind of payments method are available? If you are not paying VAT on time, what is the penalty? How much interest you have to pay on that? Such kind of things we have to discuss. So along with these five topics, let me recall. First one is income tax. Second one is corporation tax. Third one is inheritance tax. Fourth one is CGT. Fifth one is VAT value added tax. Along with this, we have uh, one or two minor areas such as ethics. Ethics, again, an important aspect and you will get a five mark question on ethics. Then you should know that if you are uh, dealing with your client on behalf of your client with HMRC, then what is your responsibility regarding the wrong treatment regarding the malpractices. For example, there might be a situation where the client might try to avoid tax, that is tax avoidance, as well as the evasion of tax. So what is your responsibility? What are the ethical codes? What, what HMRC expect from you and how you will respond to HMRC? This is a five mark area in your exam.
as well as some minor discussion about that how trust can be created, what types of trust are there, and what are the tax consequences if you are dealing with the trust. So this is basically your advanced taxation syllabus comprises of these topics. An overview of the syllabus. Now see, as I told you that my previous, our previous paper was taxation and now we are moving towards the advanced paper of ATX. So in the basic paper, the syllabus was the same. You have income tax portion as well as corporation tax, same. CGT, value added tax, and inheritance tax, the same topics. So all these five areas are part of advanced taxation. So it comprises of EX knowledge complete as well as some additional topics which are not previously asked. And those additional topics are very much important because TX knowledge is also important, but ATX additional topics are very, very much important. And those I told you that research and development, the overseas aspects. So mainly you have to focus on overseas aspects of taxation in all the topics whether it's individual, income tax, corporation, IHT, CGT, we have to know the overseas issues. Similarly, the research and development treatment, likewise, the close companies, how we have to deal with close companies, CFCs, personal companies, personal service companies, so these are the few, few areas, uh, you can also known as the domicile issue, domicile and residence issues of an individual as well as the corporation. So this is a brief idea of what we are going to study in this syllabus. The syllabus is huge. The text knowledge is in abundance. We have to cover the tech TX knowledge as well as the additional ATX knowledge. So ultimately, the challenge is you have to memorize the text rules in such a way that you have to explain against the exam question. As far as the theory and calculation is concerned, the majority of the paper is based on theoretical concepts with some support of numerical or calculation needed in some parts. Some parts might be 100% theoretical, some parts might be 100% calculative, and some parts are a mix of calculation plus theory you have to explain. So those students having good memory, or can memorize the text rules, they have the advantage that they can easily uh, reflect in their exam script that they know the rule, they can apply the rule in the given situation. Now, as far as the exam pattern is concerned, so student, you might have heard about that. Now, the professional exam is having 20 professional marks. 20 professional marks. But luckily, this paper is up till now is not affected by these 20 professional marks. The ATX paper is the same. Uh, this going to be changed in uh, 2023, like September 2023, around this. But as far as the uh, AFM is concerned, AAA is concerned, and APM is concerned, now the paper is of 80 marks along with 20 professional marks not applicable on ATX in the next few attempts. So we are studying ATX version FA21. That is, we are, in this, we are studying the rule of 
financed Act 21. And this March attempt is the last one under this FA21 attempt. From March onwards, we have FA22. Now, sometimes a student might be worried about that. What changes will be from FA21 to FA22? So don't worry, there, there are not much changes in the Finance Act. So uh, if suppose you are not able to attempt in March, you can easily attempt in June while studying the change of rates, which are not so much, uh, I mean, so much change. Uh, there are minor changes in few areas. So for the time being, we are studying ATX FA21 in our March 23 exam. Now, as far as the paper pattern is concerned, we have two sections, section A comprising of worth 60 marks and section B worth 40 marks. And as far as the detail is concerned, section A includes two questions. Question one is always of 35 marks, including four professional marks. So in the entire ATX paper, there are only four professional marks and it is always examinable in question number one, which is the deadly question in terms of the information given in terms of the multiple tax issues being tested in one single question. The examiner might be asking about the income tax, IHT, CGT, VAT in a single question number one. The question number two is worth 25 marks. And normally the five marks ethics question is a part of this, including your five ethics marks. So this is your 40, 60% uh, of the area, which is based on section A type question. As far as the section B is concerned, it is easy in terms of uh, the information available because question number three will be of 20 marks as well as question number four also worth 20 marks. So in terms of information, in terms of knowledge, in terms of tax issues, connectivity, there are less issues as compared to section A. So three and four is usually easy to attempt. And in three and four, one, one question will be from income tax or corporation, either from income tax, or from corporation, I'm telling you the likelihood. And this question might be from IHT and CGT. And in section A, the first question is usually a mix of income tax and other tax issues, such as IHT and other issues. And this is basically based on corporation, group, and other aspects. This is an idea that I'm giving you about the paper pattern that which question is related with, with topics. Paper is three hours and 15 minutes, a challenging paper in terms of time management. And the biggest challenge for you students is to attempt 100% paper. This is one of the biggest challenge that you learn how to manage your time in such a way that at least you will attempt more than 90% of the paper. The more percentage you will attempt, the higher is the passing chance. The passing ratio is not that much, uh, I mean, uh, is not that much worse or is quite good when you compare it with other papers like uh, AAA or APM. So it's around like on average 40 plus percentage usually get in every diet. 
Now, how this uh, computer-based exam look like? So let me give you give you a feel of that. That how that look like. Can you tell me if you can see my screen of the computer-based exam? Look, it's very important to use this practice platform as much as possible because uh, the student might sometimes uh, uh, feel difficulty in, in this practice platform. So the best thing is that as you progress along with your course, try to practice using this practice platform. I will show you that how many practice exams are available on this practice platform and how you can use it. You can get benefit from this practice platform. Uh, whatever practice we will do in our classes, we'll use this practice platform in order to attempt the theory question as well as the calculation one. Now you can see here, your exam comprises of two questions. One is worth 35 marks, other is worth 25 marks, and each question is compulsory. This is section A, and you can see, it is start with your question number one. Now you can see here, uh, you can use this navigator to just check that how many questions are there and you can jump along, move along during the exam. So as far as question number one is concerned, <coughs> you have been given some exhibits as well as requirement. And you can see there is a word processor. You can write the theory question. And if there is a flag calculation one, then you can use this spreadsheet. And if you want to do any calculation, you can do it here. Or if you want to do calculation directly in word processor, you can do it as well. One benefit is that with advanced taxation paper that there are many tax rules will be given to you in the form of a tax table. You can see, you can access the tax table from here. And you can see there are many rules related here, which you don't need to memorize. First one is the income tax rates. Then there are personal allowances. Then there is a rule of residence status that how we can identify the res residence status of an individual, remittance basis charges, employment rule, as well as uh, the pension scheme. And there is a capital allowances rule corporation tax rates are given, VAT rate as well as registration threshold is given, then IHT things are given here, CGT rates are given, NICs. So you can see there are lots of stuff which is going to be handy in terms of that you don't need to memorize this. You have to learn how to apply these rates, how to identify and apply these rates here. So this text table is very handy, very, very, very useful for you. It will save you from many rules to be memorized. Now you can see here, there is one option, a scratch pad, where you can show your writing working, but this is not marked. So you just use as a working tool. So as a rough paper, you can see the on, on screen calculator is there. So first of all, see, a 35 mark question, a very really huge one. And you can see there are many parts and either you have to show a memorandum or a report and the format is also give you some marks. So prepare the notes for use in a meeting. So meeting notes and first part is about uh, inheritance tax of six marks. Then you can see a VAT issue of four marks, choice of business structure in that income tax and corporation tax, 11 marks other matters, income tax refund, five marks. So you can see there are multiple tax issues in a single question. That makes it a difficult one for the students that how to handle this section, a huge question. And also see here, professional marks will be awarded for the approach taken to problem solving, the clarity of the explanation in calculation, 
the effectiveness with which the information is communicated and the overall presentation in a style of the note that is worth four marks. So if you are if you if you are have uh, if you are presenting in a proper format, your calculation is legible, your theory, theoretical stuff is clear, the approach is systematic, the communication is good, then you can easily get these four professional marks in question number one, section A. So what do you have to do? You have to study, you have to read these exhibits. You have to identify the relevant information from these exhibits as per the requirement of the question. So see, the reading material is quite huge here, as well as the specific requirement from the manager. You can see here the detailed question. The in the requirement, the question is not detailed, but in the second exhibit, you can see the requirement is there. Calculate the amount which Vanda will inherit from Lucy after any IHT tax has been paid, the advantages and disadvantages of VAT structure. So this is a kind of question. Now moving along, our second question worth 25 mark. You can see, again, you have exhibits, attachment one, attachment two, extracts of email from your manager and the same response option. So you can see the requirement, again, not clear requirement. And if you want to see the detail, so it's extract from email of your manager and there are details of the requirement. So this is basically a corporation tax question and there are three requirements in this question. Now section B, and I told you section B, each question worth 20 marks, not much in detail. So see question number three here, only one scenario and just requirement and requirement is very much clear. What is the requirement? There are three requirements. You can see, explain with supporting calculation. This is the kind of question you have to deal with most of the time. Explain with supporting calculation. So for explanation, you need tax rules. If you memorize the tax rules, then as per the scenario, you have to explain accordingly with some supporting calculation about the capital gain tax implication of a, of a takeover. In the next part, explain with supporting calculation. And in the third part, advise whether or not there are any capital gain tax or IHT advantages. So this is a kind of a theoretical question. And the next one, also the same style, you can see there is a 20 mark requirement. And there are one, two, three, four marks given here. And this is mainly related with individual income tax issues, the pension and other kind of employment issues. So this is the kind of uh, paper pattern comprises of four, four questions and time management is key. Time management is very important. We have to be very much, uh, I mean, quick in the requirement that what is the requirement, how much time you have to invest in section A, how much time you have to invest in section B. Now let's discuss one of the previous examiner reports and let's identify what examiner want from you and what examiner says about that, what mistakes usually committed by the students. So here is June 2022, examiner report. First one is the format of the exam. Now, this is the journal approach to the ATX UK exam. Now, we have to follow the instruction of the examination team so that we will not commit the kind of mistake which usually students commit and they, they get some, uh, they, they don't get the good results. So first of all, Candidates should pay particular attention to the following in order to maximize their chance of success in the exam. Number one is know their stuff. So successful candidates are able to demonstrate a good level of accurate knowledge of the UK tax system. 
we are studying UK tax. So if you're not familiar with the UK tax system regarding income tax, corporation, CGT, IHT, and other stuff, then it's very difficult to pass through this exam. This includes the knowledge which is brought forward from the previous syllabus. This is extremely important and must not be underestimated. Now, this is a kind of issue that everyone has to face because the TX exam, if someone is a, a straight student, someone is a student and is also a student, not a professional, like means not in the job sector. So still, when he was in TX exam, the Finance Act was different and now the Finance Act is different. Or there might be a gap of one or two years. So it's very difficult to retain the tax knowledge. So what is the solution then? What we are providing to you is that we'll start from the scratch, we'll study each topic in detail so that it's not the basic knowledge, it's entirely the basic knowledge for us. And second thing is practice question from past exam. Now, one thing that I have to show to you is that how many computer-based exam practice material is available on ACC portal so that we can utilize the practice material. Just give me one minute. I'll show you. See, this is the advanced taxation. And uh, I'm going to choose a UK version. This is ACC official resources. Now you can see here, we have past exam library. See how many papers are given here. In the past exam library, we have uh, one, two, three, four exams available, four complete exams. Then you can see in the practice one, there are four exams available. And in the specimen, there is one exam available. So it means we have nine complete papers available on this CBE platform. And along with, we will use the resources that is the revision kit. And with there are variety of past exams available. Now, practice question from past papers. This should be a key part of candidates preparation for the exam. Candidate should note the style of the question and presentation of the model answer, particularly where a more effective or efficient style has been used with the aim of adopting this style in subsequent question which they attempt. Where a candidate did not identify a particular point, they should focus on how to spot the clues or triggers in the question. We should have flagged this up for them. In particular, this applies to the longer scenario-based question. Now you have to understand the technique that when you are reading the question, identify the important information, highlight those information, try to guess what will be the requirement ahead so that you can easily retain the knowledge and apply in the given situation. And other advice is always focus on the requirement. This is the key. What examiner is asking is important. What is your knowledge is not important. So read the requirement carefully. In the section A questions, the detailed tasks which candidates are to perform will be set out in one of the document. This is usually the, the email. Marks are awarded only for satisfying the requirement and not for other information, even if it is technically correct. So you don't have to write each and everything that you have memorized. You have to write as per the requirement. And it is clearly mentioned in the question that you have to calculate, that you have to explain, you have to advise, you have to calculate and advise. You have to follow this. If something is written like you have to explain or advise and there is no calculation needed, so there is no need to calculate. Only calculation is not sufficient. And if calculation is needed, no explanation is required. And if both is required, then you have to uh, address that accordingly. 
always pay attention to the number of marks available. This will give you an idea that how much time you have to spend on each requirement. Similarly, do not provide journal explanation or long introduction. Question specific requirement or explanation is needed. So what you have to do, think about, think before they write. So, so that you can write as per the requirement. And as far as the time management is concerned, think before you start and manage your time, the correct amount of time should be allowed for each question part. Remember that section A is quite lengthy. So usually students spend a lot of time in question number one, and that results in either completely not attempting the one question or missing few parts. Working is very important. So you have to work out, you have to show the calculation when it is needed. And similarly, those students who have already attempted this exam, something is also given for them as well. I will share this document as well in uh, my course, and we will definitely refer it again so that we can get an idea that what examiner exactly want from our side. Now, back to the discussion. We have covered the syllabus. We have covered the paper pattern along with the CV exam portal question with some examination team guidance. Now let's talk about how, what is needed and how you have to use these resources in order to get through this paper easily. So first of all, in order to learn the text rule, you have to refer to a study text. And I recommend that go for Kaplan. You don't need to use much the study text if you are following the lecture plan accordingly and the notes of each chapter. So we'll provide you notes of each chapter in advance, as well as in order to revise it effectively, the summary notes, which is hardly in 60 pages. So that you can easily use these summary notes to recall or revise, especially at the end of the syllabus or when you are working for your exam. As far as the practice is concerned, so I told you that we have to use a revision kit, which is again, one revision kit of Kaplan is more than enough. Almost there are 80 questions, which is more than enough. So we don't need to attempt the entire kit. We have to follow the key questions, which covers the majority of the topics. Along with the CV practice platform, there are eight or nine papers available there. These kits cover all the previous past papers. So we don't need to have a look towards the past papers on ACCA website because these are outdated. So we have to follow the CV portal. There are the updated past papers available. So this is the kind of recipe along with lecture, if you follow the lecture, then you don't need to spend much time on this side, study text. You have to focus on mainly on memorizing the text rules as per the given notes and practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the more you able to memorize your text knowledge. This is the key. Remember that there are some easy areas and there are some difficult areas as well. In every topic, there are some very, very easy areas and some very difficult areas as well. So in an exam setting, you have to identify the easy marks first. And in every question, there are easy marks. So the paper pattern, the how to attempt the paper, how to manage time, these all these techniques you have to learn in order to effectively pass this kind of exam.
let me tell you one thing at the end of the course completion for march we have a revision and exam drill session in that we'll only practice the past papers and through past papers we will revise the maximum of course at the last i mean last 15 days agenda this is the last 15 days agenda so there will be live classes regular which will also be given in the form of recorded lectures and will be supported with pre-recorded lectures along with the previous exam drill session and exam revision test session. So lots of practice will be there. Lots of discussion will be there. Now, as far as the timetable is concerned, let me give you an idea that we have two sessions minimum weekly. That is on Saturday and Sunday. Timing will be communicated to you and you can ask the further details on our WhatsApp number. This is the WhatsApp number 9396. This is the WhatsApp number double three six two eight six nine three nine six. We'll discuss the schedule. But we have Saturday and Sundays in the beginning uh, as per the time suitable time which is suitable for all the students coming from UK or other countries. So the timing, I'll set the timing in such a way that hopefully it will suit you all. Plus in case if you miss any live class, then immediately the recording of that live class will be available. So what, what is the benefit of the live class? The benefit of the live class is that if you are familiar with the topic, then the practice session is the key. And the queries, confusion, if you want to ask anything, then we'll support you with our WhatsApp group. There you can communicate with the tutor, ask your issues, how to prepare, what, what are the hurdles you are facing. You can easily get in touch with the tutor till your exam. Well, to be very honest, if you are studying for the first time, and you are not giving much time, like you're not working on daily basis, that is tough. If you are first time student, so you have to spend time on daily basis, at least one hour daily basis and few hours on your Saturdays and Sundays. Again, huge syllabus. So I'm just giving you a positive view that if you uh, want to attempt in letter on March, this is, this is an option available but try for the March. And if you feel that if you're not comfortable with uh, the timings or uh, the syllabus coverage, then you have the second option available Then you can defer it till the June exam. And don't worry if there are few changes in the exam, we'll support you against those changes. Our notes will reflect the change stuff. And you can also join the next session for the changes that have been from Finance Act 21 to Finance Act 22. So first, first suggestion is try for the March exam. Try your level best because uh, it is doable, not impossible. But you have to act smartly. You have to allocate your time. You have to find out time from your busy schedules and plan it accordingly. That is daily, at least one hour and few hours on Saturdays and Sundays and regular classes. You have to daily revise your notes so you can easily manage then, then it is possible. 